for surely there is an end your expectation shall not be cut off probably things are seemingly lagging behind and uh, uh, definitely god's uh, clock will not go go behind or go fast it's on time so cast all your worries upon the lord because he cares for you and now today is a special day the holy communion day and uh, the day which is scheduled in the methodist calendar transfiguration day there is a significance in that day every day it comes from god because we know uh, in the scripture uh, the day comes from god the transfiguration account it gives some sort of message and joy to our heart to every inward man and outward people it's a historical event took place just after peter rebuked jesus while the earthly ministry of jesus at the later part of his jesus in one of his discourses jesus used to say about the predict the probable the future the prediction the eschatological event that is that is that was supposed to take place in jerusalem so he said son of man is going to jerusalem now he is going to be betrayed and he will be crucified so the one of the disciples one of the apostles the peter he just uh, took jesus aside and started rebuking jesus rebuking jesus and said this will not happen to you jesus this will not happen to you you should not die on the cross it so as peter was not that much matured enough to understand what the will of god is in his life and the lives of the people of god and what is going to happen next he was not aware of all such things because he was filled with the worldly spirit though he was having a closer association with the lord at least for three and a half years in the ministry he was not able to understand the the things which is which was happening at that time and which which is to happen in future he was not aware so that's so in turn jesus turned against turned towards him and jesus rebuked peter you are you do not have the things of god in your mind you are merely man having the things of this world so that's that was the background story and after 6 days jesus comes to the mount transfiguration come he comes along with the disciples he took three of the disciples it is it is mentioned in the scripture Matthew 17 we have read in the scripture portion it is written he took three of his disciples Peter James and John Peter was already having the experience of going up and going down with Jesus so now Jesus was intending to train his disciples to show the sovereign power of Christ Jesus the divine glory of the triune god who came down in the form of flesh in the form of jesus so god the father wanted the intended the disciples to know who jesus is and what's the divinity and what's the sovereignty so that's so the transfiguration account took place the the message of transfiguration the substance of transfiguration is the title of our uh, message today substance of transfiguration a complete spiritual state of jesus was manifested in a in a radiant or in a dazzling glory to three of his disciples and uh, this transfiguration account is a sign that jesus was to fulfill 
the law and the prophecies that had been foretold by the prophets so he jesus was to fulfill the law concerning jesus christ and the prophecies concerning prophecies pertaining to jesus christ so that's how the law and the prophecy the law the law was brought by brought through moses the law was given by god through moses to the people of israel and the prophecy the major prophet eliza was considered as one of the major prophets so they are going to be pictured in in when the following verses so how, what, what do we get out of this transfi transfiguration account what is the substance of this transfiguration event what are the lessons we derive from the transfiguration account jesus as we as we saw jesus intended to train his disciples to understand who jesus is in their lives and the lives of the people of god so first point under that what are the lessons we learn from the transfiguration down through the decades uh, around 40 46 years we have been taught regularly transfiguration what is transfigure trans a different state of mind it is this this it's a trend like as almost like trans transformation it comes a paradigm shift from one phase to another phase so now the disciples were there in the um, mount so matthew 17 3 moses and eliza appeared before them talking with jesus jesus in front of his disciples he was transfigured he was he, he wanted to show the divinity of the supernatural sovereign god unto the people he wanted to he wanted the disciples to know the omni the power of power and strength of omniscient omnipresent and omnipotent god <clears throat> that's how in front of them jesus was transfigured and there in the in the presence moses and elijah were there they are obviously moses and elijah they were the representatives of the law and the prophets respectively according to matthew 5 17 jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophecies so the concerning the fulfillment of the law and the prophecy and concerning the ministry concerning the eschatology eschatological events what is going to happen in future that, that all was to discuss so the the, the lawkeeper the lawgiver moses were there and the prophet major prophet elijah were there with jesus of nazareth with the transfigured form the the grace of the gospel receives witness from the law and the prophecies the grace of the gospel receives witnesses from the law and the prophets in ancient days both eastern and western church used to celebrate the great feast of transfiguration of the lord the two great men played vital role in the history of jewish culture they wanted to honor jesus and follow god's promises seen in malachi 4 5 it is written according to malachi 4 5 i will send the prophet eliza before the great and awesome day of the lord comes this is the fulfillment of the word of the lord again the eliza was appeared eliza appeared before jesus in front of moses eliza was to appear <clears throat> in order to announce the beginning of god's restoration of all things there was a the discussion there was a there was an important campaign was going on in the mount transfiguration eliza was on the earth he 
was he was he faithfully accomplished the ministry god has entrusted upon elijah's care similarly moses also was a faithful man in all god's house household he proved his faithfulness and uh, he was there with uh, <coughs> jesus transfigured jesus second kings 2:11 it is written elijah at the end of his ministry he was taken up to heaven by the whirlwind he was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind with um, golden chariots so he was not bur been buried on this earth he was directly got the promotion he directly get into got into the uh, heaven and this sim similar to that moses the servant of the most high also he died and he was not he was buried by the lord capital l the lord lord buried the most lord buried moses so even today nobody knows where the tomb of moses lay so these two personalities they lived an exemplary life on this earth for the sake of the kingdom of god and they made an impact in the society so they were there together with jesus of nazareth so the ultimately god intended the people to know who god is they should not take god simply for granted they should take god seriously in their lives because everything is in that almighty power so that's so is, is that the children children reminded today be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the nations i will be exalted in all the earth so what do we do be still and know before we utter <coughs> word from our mouth we should understand what is going to happen what is there so be still in the presence of the lord with the attitude of prayer with the attitude of meditation and you will come to know many more things god has stored up for you and here deuteronomy 34 4 to 6 the later part of his ministry <coughs> moses was called by god they turned the almighty god and see he climbed to the mount nebo their lord showed him the whole land of canaan the place where god has promised for the people of israel and people of israel were expected to inherit the land of canaan where milk and honey flows it was a it was filled with prosperity so god called moses and showed the land they were supposed to inherit the canaan land of canaan and said to him this is the land i promised an oath to abraham isaac and jacob the forefathers i have let you see it with your eyes i have allowed you to see that land from this distance from afar but you will not cross over into it you will not cross over into it moses because something happened in the later part of the ministry life and ministry of moses it was countered and god has now instructed moses you will not cross over to enter it and moses died and lord buried him lord buried him it is written but to this day nobody knows where the tomb of moses were there so this is an exemplary important vital even they were they were consistently playing major role in the lives of the ancient history jewish history and they were there in the transfiguration account with the message of the eschatological events and now second thing what do we learn from this uh, transfiguration account listen what god says to you listen we are listening to many resources we are listening to the people in the world we are listening to our own relatives we are listening to something else 
but here the special message comes from God. What is that? Matthew 17, 4. One of the three, it is good for us to be here. Peter said in the transfiguration, Jesus was transfigured in the midst of uh, Moses and um, Elijah in, and with the disciples and immediately Peter opened his mouth and said, it is Lord, it is good for us to be here. It is always good for us to be in the presence of the Lord. It will make much more difference than to sit in the worldly presence. And Peter said, it is good for us to be here. Matthew 17, 14, I will, he, he further says, I will put up three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Jesus, one for Eliza. So let's have the harmony together in this place. So he, with his limited understanding and limited knowledge, with his um, anthropological view, the humanitarian view, human, human view, human idea, he just is said what he thought in his heart. Lord, I will put up three, ten, one for Moses, one for uh, Eliza, one for Jesus. And uh, though Peter had an intimacy with Jesus for three and a half years, he could not understand what is happening. And Matthew 16, 23, Jesus rebuked him. You are merely a worldly man. I, you don't have the mind of God. Have the mind of God. Let's have the mind of Christ. How he looked at the people who were suffering. How his heart was melted with compassion. We look at looked at the people's miseries. So we need to have the mind of Christ. In one place, Apostle Paul mentions, for us, we have the mind of Christ. So this, uh, the message, the, the lesson we learn, the second lesson is from God. It comes from God. Listen to what God says. Don't jump into a conclusion. Don't decide for yourself with your worldly knowledge. You make something, you try to discern something from the word of the Lord. So God's the God of the word, what the voice of the Lord says, you listen what he says. Matthew 17, 5. While he was still speaking, one of his own. While he still, still he was still, he, Moses, um, Peter was speaking on his own. Not, it, it, it did not come from the heavenly wisdom. It, he, he talks by his own. And God intervenes. How did he intervenes? For everything, there is a limit. So this uh, Peter was allowed to talk in the, in, the, in the presence of the Lord. And he said, first, it is good for us to be here. And then he kept on talking by himself. What, what did he say? Okay, I will make a tent, separate tent for you, each other, for each, for each one of you. So the God intervenes. No, he just controlled, controlled Peter. For everything, there is a limit. Even God has put up the boundary to the sea, the rugged sea. You are not, you are allowed to come up to this extent. You are not supposed to come beyond the boundary I have set. So immediately God began to speak, speak to Peter. What did he speak? A bright cloud covered them. Revelation 1.7 A bright cloud. Immediately the bright, bright cloud covered these disciples. Covered the whole scene. The cloud represents here according to Revelation 1.7 the same Jesus is going to come back with the clouds. The clouds is the thing God uses to manifest his presence. So Jesus is going to be appeared in the clouds. And even in Acts of Apostles, at the end of his earthly ministry, while he was taken up, the men of Galilee, they were auspiciously looking unto Jesus. What? while he was taken up and immediately God the father sent two of his angels 
and the message was pa message passed on to this beloved disciples who were expe expecting Jesus taken up. Men of Galilee, this same Jesus is going to come back in the cloud. The cloud hide Jesus. It is written, the cloud hide Jesus. Now the voice of the Lord has come from the cloud. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. The Lord has come down from heaven with the clouds. The dead in Christ will rise first and the people who are alive will be caught up within a twinkling of an eye. That's the mystery. It's going to be revealed. This is the reminder. And uh, the cloud covered them and the voice of God was uttered. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. That's the second message. Second message, second lesson we receive from God is stop talking. It's a, not a meaningful word. The word, way you talk, only listen what God says. That's enough. You make your full stop over your own talk. Listen what God says now. What, how, what God says? You listen what Jesus says. This is my beloved son. He is my beloved son. This is my son whom I love. You put on love. Put on love. You keep yourself away from bitterness and hatredness and several other carnal characters. You just keep yourself away from that and put on love because this is my son whom I love. I love my son, only begotten son. With him I am well pleased. I am well pleased. And Father, he says, listen to him. Listen to him. God hates senseless talk. Matthew 3, 17. In a baptism account also it is seen. Uh, Jesus, was, the son of God was there. He was ready to take baptism in the river Jordan. And John the Baptist was, was also there uh, to give baptism to Jesus of Nazareth. And immediately the voice of heaven um, was heard. He is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased because he does all the righteousness of God face by face and at the same time the Holy Spirit was descending on Jesus in the form of Tao. So three personalities, the Godhead personalities were meeting there in the even baptismal account. So the same thing happens, What God, what, listen what he says. Don't listen to human being, listen what God says. As Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, we are expected to listen what God says. We are expected to be on our knees and listen what God says. The second message. First message, be still and know that I am God. Second message, we learn from this transfiguration account is to listen what Jesus says. That's how the word of God is given to our hands. In olden days, in ancient times, God spoke directly. Peter, stop talking. Listen what Jesus says. And now we have the Bible with us. We have the word of God and it speaks to us if we refer day seriously. Then third thing, the worship has been initiated. The worship of the divinity. Uh, now the third exhortation through this uh, transfiguration enlightens us to worship the divinity of the Sovereign Lord. Worship the divinity of the Sovereign Lord. Humanity and divinity. Worship the divinity. God is 100, Jesus is 100% human, sinless and 100% divine. Di worship the divinity. Find out the divinity. Search the divinity of the Sovereign Lord. Worship the divinity of the Sovereign Lord. Ultimately, the worshippers are expected to worship the Lord in truth and spirit. And by this incident, the worship was reinstated. How do we worship the Lord? In spite of all the distraction, we are expected to concentrate on the one who gave his life. We are expected to set our eyes on the author and perfecter of lives. So this worship is initiated in this from this moment 
of time. So how, how it was? The disciples were able to hear the voice of the Lord. Matthew 17, 6. The disciples heard the voice of the Lord. What was the voice of the Lord? He is my son in whom I am well pleased. You, I love him and you listen what he says. That's the message. They fell face down to the ground. The disciples immediately having li listened the word of the Lord, they fell down on the ground and they worshipped the Lord. Jesus came and touched them. We need to have the touch of Christ. So ask God to touch, touch us. When, when, when we feel the touch of Christ, our lives will be completely transformed. The way we used to talk will never be happened. The way we uh, used to do will never be done. So that's the, that's the transformation. That's the turning point. That's the U-turn we supposed to take. That's the way we are trained through this word. John 18, 18, 1. When Jesus finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and went to the, went to your garden. Now it's, uh, they, Jesus along with the disciples, they entered into the garden to pray. And uh, the, something happens. A big mob, a, a great a group of people, they, ca they come with a torchlight and uh, swords, things like that, headed by Judas Cariot to betray Jesus. Judas Cariot was finding a right time to betray Jesus and he found the time and he came with the chief priest and other people who were who, who, who accusing Jesus. This Jesus with, the, with his disciples entered into, the, entered into the garden to pray and at the same time uh, Judas Cariot along with the chief priest and people they come toward they came toward Jesus to betray and to kill Jesus that's going to happen John 18 3 Judas came and John 18 4 5 Jesus asked who is it you want whom do you want and they said Jesus of Nazareth and Jesus said I am he I am he immediately they, 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 they have fallen down. Jesus did not do anything. The, way, the moment he said his name, I am he, I am that I am. No one can resist, I am that I am. Use the name Jesus. The name Jesus is above all names. If you are irritated by uh, an inform the spirit of infirmity, use that name Jesus. It's above all names. The moment Jesus said his name, I am he, they were fallen behind, they were fallen down. That's the divinity of the sovereign Lord. People started worshipping the Lord. Oh, this much uh, divinity is seen, this much uh, sovereignty, sovereign power is seen, this much power of Almighty God is seen. So let's experience the power of God. Our warfare is not for this world and we are specially anointed, anointed by God. Our warfare is to break every yokes and chains. It's a spiritual warfare. You can pray silently and outwardly you will receive the answer. If you pray silently, secretly, you will get the answer outwardly and you will be enriched with God's choices to blessings. Now here, Jesus did not do anything physically. He said, I am that I am. I am he. And immediately, miracle happened. Romans 14.11, Philippians 2.10, Every knee shall bow before Jesus. Isaiah 45.23, Every knee shall bow. My dear friends, do not worry about anything uh, causing trouble, bringing trouble in, in our lives. Just take the name Jesus. And uh, definitely you will see the difference. Whatever the physical ailments, whatever the diseases, whatever the infirmity, whatever the struggle you face, whatever the suffering you go through, don't bother such things. 
just to concentrate on the name Jesus, you will achieve what you exactly wanted to achieve in your spiritual life. And the same thing exactly happened. Matthew 17, 6, Jesus said, got up. They, they were fallen down. When Jesus uttered his name, I am he, immediately the people, they wanted to accuse Jesus, they wanted to capture Jesus, they wanted to crucify Jesus, they were fallen down. And Jesus, again, see what did he do? He touched them and said, get up. You shake off the dust and get up. Arise from the place where you are pulled down. Get up. Arise and shine for the light has come. Even in the Gethsemane, in the utter darkness, Jesus enlightened the people. The light shone on this earth. So the light has come into our hearts. Let's illumine the light. Let's not block the light. Let's be submissive unto God. And shake off your dust. Rise up. Sit enthroned. 50, Isaiah 52, 1 says, The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. The uncircumcised devil and defi <coughs> Sorry. defiled devil will not enter into you. <coughs> if you experience the substance of transfiguration, the uncircumcised and defiled will never enter into your jurisdiction. That's the final message. His awesome presence is described in Revelation 1.13. We should not act out of first knowing what the will of God is. We should understand what the will of God is concerning marriage, concerning children's education, concerning children's future, concerning our future, concerning the settlements and everything. Just seek the guidance of guidance from God. Know the will of God. Peter intended to build three tabernacles for God, but it would not have been good in God's eyes. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Good deeds are always defined by God in his word. Peter had a voice of God and uh, <clears throat> we have the word of the Lord. My dear friends, let's submit ourselves to God and understand what the will of God is. Let's be still and know that who is God. Let's listen what God says. Instead of we make noise, let's listen to God and worship the divinity of the sovereign Lord. Be still and know that who is Lord. And second thing, listen what God says. Third, worship the sovereignty of the living God. May God be with us. May God bless us.